The corruption of the police in this case is unbelievable. What about the Leah Betts thing with the ecstasy? I know nothing about that. I wasn't around when that happened. I don't think for one second that uh, Mark Murray in any, has any involvement in it. I think, all honesty, it's down to a certain doorman that had full control of everything. I don't even think the pills belong to those three. I think it's just been pushed onto them because they're out of the way. So Leah was a young girl who took an ecstasy and died, but her father was a police officer? Yeah, she died of access water to her brain. Is it 12 pints? It wasn't the pill that actually killed it, was the actual water. Yeah, her dad was uh, a firearms officer in London. So How long before, when Craig and Pat and Tony were killed, did this happen? How long before it happened? What, the, girl the young died? girl, yeah. She died before they were killed. Yeah, but how long? I think it was a matter of months. It wasn't long. I know uh, her dad went on and on a, a telly, which I don't blame the bloke. I mean, you've lost your daughter and put out quite a few partial sentences to people. Uh, but look at the pain you've had, what you've went through. You're willing to destroy your brothers, your mum, but you've went through. Imagine the pain that that dad went through. So even though with they three being killed, it's always been a possibility the coppers were involved. Well, since I've come out, and I'll be straight with you, since I've come out on this and I'm doing my little videos and things are kicking off, I haven't heard from Mark committed suicide, Mark Randall. I haven't heard for, from Jackie from years. Jackie's come out talking to me. Uh, I'm talking to a police officer that used to work at Basildon Police Station as a sergeant. Uh, I won't give his name in a minute until he gives me the go-ahead. Now, he's put something in my head which stands to sense to me. They were taking down that lane and Lyra's best dad was there and he blew him away. That's why it's all corrupt and all the... I mean, when they were blown away, okay, I, I think her dad did it. I think her dad was waiting down that lane for them to turn up. I don't think it was a deal. I think they were taken down that lane. The person got out of the vehicle, he opened the door and he blew them away. A firearms expert. He's not stupid. He knows how the machine works. No forensics at all. There was only a train to print. In the morning, uh, my brother's vehicle's on tracker. He's being tracked everywhere he goes by a drug squad. In the morning, an officer goes down. An hour before they were found, finds the bodies, phone radio through to his senior officer, leave it, let the public find them. And that's not telling me that's, there's not something wrong going on there. They pulled Craig for driving while he's qualified, let him go. Pat Tate never got nicked for the assault on the pizza person, let him go. The corruption, and I'm, I'm straight, from the police is unbelievable. When I, when I, in 96, I moved to Ripley, uh, I got a job for Balf BT. I was a bit stupid. I went out drink driving. I got pulled for drink driving. I went to Alfton Police Station. Uh, charged for drink driving. I was due to be discharged from the police station, pending a, 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 a court here in Alfton. As I was going out, I was told I couldn't go. There's two officers from Basin coming to see me. I stayed in the police cell all day. Uh, about six o'clock, Jack Bowler turned up, another officer. Uh, we're taking you back to Bazard and you're wanted on a, a burglary charge. This is what I'm being old on. Well, I've never done a burglary as such in my life, so yeah, fair enough. So in the next day, they stay in the hotel to where Bazard and uh, they question me about the murders. They show me pictures of people if I knew these people. Uh, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't give any information as such. Uh, they let me go. And as I walked out of the police station, Jack Bowler's words was, I mean, his words, it's still in my head this day. I'm sorry, Brian, it had to be done. That was an officer's words to me. So that tells me straight away, police were involved. So even you decided to become an informant, what was the, what did you do? Right. So the informant part, I, I didn't shop on them uh, before. I shopped on them twice over guns. So they wanted a machine gun. For what reason, I don't know. So I was in Strangeway Prison some years ago, and I met a bloke called Deroy, Deroy Showers. I think he's a, he was a scouse, well-known drug dealer, very, very well-known in Liverpool. I've made friends of him. For that. I went to see him a few times in prison. It's on record. Uh, he said, I could get anything for me. I asked him to get this. He said, he put me in contact with someone. 
a couple of weeks later, someone gave me a phone call. We had to go to Manchester, to the Piccadilly Hotel, bar underneath, meet someone there. Me and Craig sat there. Uh, about an hour later, this uh, black lad walked in. Uh, we had to go. We had to follow him. Went down to, uh, I think it's Canal Street in Manchester, for a drink there. So he wasn't taking us direct to the place. He was seeing if we was being followed. So we went down to Canal Street. Then we went to Chinatown for a drink, and then we had to follow him. So we followed him up to Moss Sideway. Uh, he went into an house with Craig. Next minute, twenty minutes later. Some money was passed, the bag come out, and Craig had a machine gun in the bag. We drove back to Basildon. I was a bit concerned that the machine gun was going to do a lot of damage, so I phoned Essex Drug Squad and uh, told them. Well, I phoned Jack Bowler first and told him that we had actually brought a machine gun back into Basildon. Uh, he said, OK, I'll pass it on. Gary Duck will phone me and said, uh, any idea what the machine gun is? I said, as far as I know, Craig's got it on him. OK, that was it. Nothing done. So as we're going into 95, uh, Craig was getting a bit more paranoid and that lot and advised me that I left, I left Basildon before anything come on top. People still think I was talking. So he did. He paid me to go to Tanner Reef, give me some pills, went to Tanner Reef. I lasted two weeks. I come back, phone Mark and Mark said, I'm going to get a job in Barring Furnace. So I come back February 95, went to Barring Furnace, got there for a bit, uh, worked up there, then come back to Bazin again uh, until May. Then things were getting really heavy again, and I left again, went back to Barring Furnace. And then Craig phoned me, I think it was December the 4th? No, December the 2nd or 3rd, phoned me. I said, can you come back to Bazin? I want to talk to you. We're going to sort things out, uh, get it all sorted. You come back to Bazin. Just forget about it. I was excited. I drove back to Bazin to my mum's bungalow. She was there, welcomed me in, sat me in the chair on a table. She said, we're going to sort this once for all. I'm not getting any younger. I want my sons back. That was her words to me. I thought, what's going on here? What's is something? She's not well or something. So I sat there. Half hour later, Craig turned up, uh, come in, shook me hand, give me a cuddle. He said, uh, I know you're not the police informer. He said, uh, for mum's sake, we're just going to call it a day now, come out to Basildon, we won't bother you, keep out of our way, and we'll keep out your way. And we, about a couple of hours we're talking through, and he kept, he was on something, because he kept walking up to the window looking at his vehicle outside. He kept looking and that, and I was over the moon, I thought... <laughs> I'm in with mother again. I'm in with Craig again. Things are going to go back to where I want them. I'm, it's working. So it's, it's getting late. It must have been about half 11, 12. Craig said, I'm going now. I've got a busy day tomorrow. So I said, I'll walk out with you. So his car's next to mine. He's got on his uh, Range Rover and the driver's side. I've opened the passenger door. I said, thanks for that, mate. Shit, shit, I'm grateful for this. He opened the glove compartment. He put a gun to me safe. He said, I fucking hate your guts, you cunt. If you want for mother, I'll put a bullet in your head. And I thought, what's going on here? You just, is it? So I just shut the door. I see some coke in the bag. I shut the door. He drove off. I followed him out. As I'm driving down, because Beam is a long road before we get the main road, driving down. He's drove down. A white Sierra's drove behind him. Me not thinking enough of it. He's gone. I drove end of the road, got the phone box, and I phoned him. I grasped him up about carrying a gun and coke. Nothing was done. I went back to Barring Furnace and on, on the uh, a couple of days later, mother phoned me. Your brother's dead. See, no, he ain't dead. I've seen the news. Yes, he's dead. So that's the last time I see him. You've reported to the coppers that he's had a machine gun. Nothing's yep. happened. You've reported he's had a handgun. How much coke? I think there were three kilo in a, a, a black, I think it was a black bag, a head, head bag or some, some sort of sports bag. Yeah, I phoned, yeah. And it's on record. And I'm telling it live now. I grasped him. No one's ever known this, just you, you and Liam's, that's, that's it. All the years you weren't a grass, he was accusing you. You then become a grass, and then he says he knows you're not a grass. It's because well, he stuck the gun in my head. It's hard to understand. You think, you say, well, if you grassed him once, you grassed him twice. When you start playing with guns, you're being serious business then. You know I mean? 
because Craig done an armed robbery once many years ago with a couple of his mates on a, a co-op post office, uh, not post office, a co-op funeral parlour, told there was 30K in it, but then he walked away with 3K. So I know came, uh, Craig was capable of using a gun. So when the machine gun wanted and coming to part, I was concerned, yeah. And I did grass him. It comes at a stage where everyone's calling me a grass, why not be a grass? How was that feeling for you? Good. Did you not care anymore? You didn't care anyway, but did you? No, I, I, I didn't care when I grasped him out about the, the gun and coke. I thought I was saving him, to be honest with you. Deep down, I thought, yeah, you go to prison for a long time. You might learn a few things. 